There are things in this world that we will never fully understand. Understand. We want answers. answers. Like, why the f*** are you making music? Ghost hunting shows are nearly a dime a dozen these days, with almost the entirety of Travel Channel being nothing but ghost hunting shows or paranormal shows. But one ranks as the most popular of them all. Airing in 2008 with 274 episodes, they're not including the 53 episode specials that were not part of the episodes list, with seven spin-off shows under the same brand, brand title and also hosted by the same man, we have... Now I know what you're probably thinking. That title makes no sense if you're going to talk about Ghost Adventures. Obviously, you expect me to talk about the show and the crew, but I learned something incredible in September, and I just had to share it. And given the fact that it's the people from the most popular ghost hunting show on Travel Channel, I felt it was fitting for the spooktacular. I found out that the Ghost Adventures crew made music about 12 years ago. Nope, now that makes sense why I brought it here. So this started back in September when I was on Reddit eating cereal before I headed out to work 20 minutes before I was to clock in. And I found this Reddit post where this person found their CD of The Other Side by Nick Groff. They forgot it existed, and I didn't know it existed, but luckily it's almost impossible to find the CD, so I don't have to go and listen to it. Oh, f So I knew what I was listening to that night at work. This comment sums up the album. It came out in 2012. 2012. And when I showed it to Josh, he thought it was 1998. I even thought it sounded like it was from the early 2000s. I also can't really tell what the lyrics are. I can easily understand the lyrics to the new Epic the Musical Saga when Jorge releases them on my first listens to those, and I may not be understanding making music fully or audio fully, but I believe this is what you call a bad mix on their part when it's hard to hear the lyrics of an instrumental track. Mandy is strict and gets pissed when someone calls her a bitch. Oh, thank God, there was only one. Now, oh, come on. This one isn't good. It's not bad either. It got some, what, better? However, it feels like they got worse too. I mean, look at this album cover. You know what you're getting into. But that's not the only Ghost Adventures member that made music. Here we go. Zach Baggins vs. Pragacon is an album made by Zach Baggins and Pragacon. The album is actually called Necrofusion, with 11 songs and lasting 50 minutes. I have to say, along with a friend who also listened to it while we stocked ibuprofen. I mean, the songs were pretty good when Zach wasn't talking. It's just dubstep songs with sound bites of Zach Baggins saying random shit. Or I should correct myself, the first seven songs are a rock album till we reach a song called Demonator, which then the whole album then becomes a dubstep album. But now we get to Billy. There's not much to discuss because I found only this three minute mix someone on YouTube posted and it sounds like generic DJ beats with someone that is not him speaking. Thank God. But he posted on Facebook a whole album and yeah, that was definitely a 2000s era look. I can't say much because I my senior year I was rocking the Markiplier shark fin. Did I mention I graduated in 2017? Now we move on to Jay, who actually released his quite recently. The Coldest Solstice is an experimental album. EP? I don't know what you call it, but it's experimental. Released December 29th, 2023, the album, for lack of a better term, has three songs and is about 16 minutes long. So each song is about five minutes, right? Right? The first song, Nunk Ko Pi, if I even pronounced it correctly, it's just under a minute long. Then we move to Happy Christmas, War is Over. Future Justin here, editing this about 21 minutes after it was supposed to come out. Uh, I wanted to make a quick correction. I'm pretty sure actually Happy Xmas is sung by Jay and Andrew Haney and is not what I originally thought in my recording, which was just the John Lennon version, but it sounded robotic, which is what you're hearing right now. So I just wanted to add this instead of my original spot. Okay, back to the past, Justin. Then the title track. 
the coldest solstice is over 12 minutes long it's just weird synths and instrumental and at one point in the song it felt like a, this exact horror scenario right here I didn't mind it and it was such a change of pace from the weird rock dubstep music Zach and Nick produced that I was was actually fine with it though if I probably have listened to this before that the 12 minute song probably would have gotten to me more than it did just with the sheer length of it and now we reach Aaron Aaron I swear to god you're one of my favorites on the show do not make me listen to an hour long album Aaron actually makes paintings and other kinds of art that I found cool. Though they are expensive, I can tell he puts thought and work into these, and I would say the price is justified. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So yeah, four of these guys have either made music or done something in the music industry, and one who's an artist. I think you can guess who I liked more. Shut up and take my money. 